Hey, and welcome to uh, lecture group five uh, on data visualization. Um, so this set of lectures is going to follow closely uh, the middle section of uh, Klaus Wilkie's book of the fundamentals of data visualization. And that book and the, the reading that I've, you've, you've been asked to do talks about uh, broadly uh, the visualizations for amounts, distributions, proportions, XY relationships, geospatial data, and uncertainty. In this lecture, I'm going to focus specifically on, on half of those distributions, uncertainty, and XY relationships. I'm going to start this lecture by diving into how we uh, visualize distributions of data. So probably the most classic way to, to visualize a distribution is, is using a histogram. And this shows a histogram for the same set of data, the age distribution of passengers on the Titanic, uh, using different bin widths, you know, from you know, very narrow uh, to very wide. And uh, it's, the note here says it's, it's very useful to check different bin widths, not to just go with whatever the default is. Uh, because they they emphasize they smooth the data to different degrees. So the, the coarsest one, you know, has the same general pattern, but misses some of the nuances that you get in some of the more finely uh, binned versions. But if you bin uh, too narrowly, you just get uh, you kind of start to getting more noise than signal. So you, you know, depending on the data set, you're going to want to find a balance in either the two middle ones here on the the one diagonal. Uh, B and C, both to me seem very, fairly reasonable choices of, of his bin widths. Um, next, how would we do this in R? So uh, R has a fan, handy function called hist for making histograms. Uh, this box that just popped up shows all of the arguments for the histogram function. You can look at that in the, the help page. But I want to point out the only required argument is x, which is the data set. So you could just pass this in a data set, and it'll make a histogram of the data set using a bunch of defaults. Um, some of the more useful optional variables here for histograms are is the breaks argument, which actually is interesting because it takes a, a wide a range of different things. If you put in a just a, a single number, that'll be how many groups it'll break into. Uh, if you want to get even more com uh, more fine-tuned, you can give it a vector that says where you want the breaks to be. Uh, or there's a bunch of different algorithms internally that'll try to calculate uh, bin, uh, bin widths automatically, and you can say the name of the, the al algorithm. So you know, the default right now is an algorithm called Sturges. Uh, the other thing that I find myself using pretty frequently is the probability flag, which is a Boolean true for false variable that says, do you want the y-axis uh, to be actual the raw? The raw data of, of counts, or do you want that to be normalized so that if you're so it integrates to one? So if, if I'm visualizing a probability distribution, I'll usually say probability equals true in order to get that normalized to one. Um, one of the things I'm going to cover in this lecture on visualizations is that these days there's kind of two classes of how people approach visualization in, in R. One is using the base packages that have been around. Uh, for for decades now, and then there's a the newer version which uses the um, the uh, the tidyverse and particularly the ggplot library, ggplot2 right now uh, within uh, the tidyverse. So a, a lot of the visualizations you'll see actually come from uh, ggplot in this case, and so ggplot uh, has a, a, a fairly complicated syntax. We'll we'll dive into it more in lab. Uh, but you, know, you start with the ggplot function, you tell it what data set you're working with, uh, then you give us this, this what's the AES, which stands for aesthetic, which tells you basically, you know, there's a lot of other optional things, but the, the gist of it is which columns of data are you working with within that data frame, and then uh, some of the details about how the plot is structured. In this case, we're using making a histogram, so we're using the geom histogram function, and telling it, you know, the bins and the the fill color, and like I said, there's a bunch of other optional arguments, just as many as up here with hist under the ggplot options. <coughs> um, since I've introduced the use of our base functions, I wanted to go over some of the optional arguments that show up in a lot of uh, 
plotting functions within R. Um, these are all optional, but they're handy. So the, the, the X lab and the Y lab arguments uh, label the X and Y axes respectively. And so they're expecting that you're passing in character data. So a string, a text string, you know, something that's quoted. Um, the X and Y limit variables set, so X lim and Y lim set the limits of the X axis and the Y axis respectively. And so you pass in a vector of length two that gives the minimum and the maximum. This can be really helpful if you're visualizing a data set, say in a histogram, and there's some outliers, and you, you're like, you just want to cut the outliers off. You just want to say, I want to look at this section of the data. Or you're plotting something and you want to, say in a scatter plot, and zoom in to one part of the window, you can set the X and the Y limit. Uh, just generally, I, I find myself using those uh, quite frequently. Uh, main sets the title, so that also is taking in a quoted text string. Uh, call sets the color. Color in R is complicated, and this is shared not just uh, between, not just in base, but it applies to ggplot more generally, because you can specify colors uh, by number, by name, by RGB code, which tells you, on a, you know, essentially a vector from you know, zero, uh, zero to 255 for red, green, and blue, or as a hexadecimal number. So if you get into more complicated color palettes, you'll see things often specified in terms of RGB or hex. Um, a lot of the defaults you will see in lab is just to reference them by number or name with like R defaults like one equals black, two equals red, three equals green, four equals blue. Like you kind of get used to that. The other thing that uh, this is showing here, sorry, is, is a, a figure that's depicting some of the, the uh, named colors within R. So there are you know, simple ones like red, blue, and green, but there's also a much more uh, deeper palette of other named colors you can reference. And uh, this link here, which I've shortened using Bitly, gives a link to a, a PDF cheat sheet on kind of helps you think about R and R color palettes. And we'll talk about R color a little bit more in the, in the next uh, lecture block as well. LWD uh, sets line width. Line widths are set relative to one. So if I set line width to two, it makes a line twice as thick. If I set line width to 0.5, it makes it half as thick. So it should be a positive number though. Um, LTY stands for line type. And you know, this figure that just popped up are some of the, the defaults. So that should default to one for a solid line. Uh, and then you know, two, three, four, five, six are various versions of dashed lines. Cool. So that goes over some of the basics for uh, uh, our optional arguments for manipulating figures that you'll see a lot uh, within the labs over the course of the semester. So another way to visualize uh, distributions of data instead of just a raw histogram is what's called a, a kernel density plot or something just a density plot. And this is essentially a smoothed version of a histogram. And so a, a kernel density plot is created essentially by taking some other function uh, and centering it on uh, each, uh, each data point uh, and then adding up those functions. So here, if we use a Gaussian kernel or normal kernel, we, we center a, a, a normal distribution on each data point and then we add those normal distributions together and we get a, a smooth curve that is uh, you know, like, like the histogram but now smooth. Um, and you know how smooth we get is dependent on the bin width, which is essentially you know how wide are each of those normal distributions. And then there's some normalization to make the whole thing integrate to one. And so here we're seeing you know options uh, for different versions of that same data we saw in the last histogram, but smooth uh, with different bin widths. You know from a narrow bin width, which again is see, letting us see a lot of the noise in the data, to, to progressively smoother. Within base graphics, there's a function density for calculating densities, and its only required argument is x, like hist, and a bunch of other optional arguments, such as adjusting the bandwidth using dw, changing the kernel that you're using with kernel. Uh, useful, a particularly handy thing is this adjust term, which says it's going to calculate a default bandwidth, and you're going to uh, scale relative to that. So like if I wanted to make the 
bandwidth half, I would make that 0.5. When the bandwidth double, I make it two. Uh, and then also worth noting that the density function doesn't actually draw a plot, it just calculates the density. So the number n here as an argument basically tells you how many points it returns to then draw a line. And so when you actually want to draw a plot, you usually would call the function plot and then density. Uh, and then, you know, if you want that to have a lot of points in that curve, you would uh, increase n. Uh, within ggplot, you can also draw a density. So it's very similar to what we did with histograms. You give, you know, uh, setting up the data frame with ggplot setting up the aesthetic to the column of data. And instead of using uh, the geom histogram, we're using the geom density. And adjust has this, essentially the same meaning as it did for the density function. It's telling you uh, how to you know, scale the bandwidth relative to what it calculates by default. And then you can set a fill color uh, as well. Uh, one useful thing to point out, kind of one classic gotchas with densities because they smooth things is there is this potential for it to smooth too much uh, and kind of smooth beyond the reasonable range of the data. So here is a, a, a smooth density of, of ages. Um, and uh, we see that once we smooth the data, it's predicting a non-trivial amount of probability density associated with negative ages. And negative ages are clearly impossible. So you always have to make sure that you are uh, chopping those, those in, you know, impossible values off of your densities. So you, you set the x and y limits or you set the plotting window. You, you just basically want to make sure that you're not counting uh, those negative values for ages or, or a lot of other variables we'll see in environmental sciences are similarly um, zero bound or have some upper, some you know, true upper or lower bound. Uh, so that kind of wraps up my introduction to the basics of visualizing uh, individual distributions. In the next uh, video, we're going to move on and talk about how to visualize multiple distributions simultaneously.